Kumusta kayo lahat? Welcome to Pinoy Bounce. I'm your host for tonight, Marky Mark. And this whole episode, we're dedicating again to Top Shot. And my guest for tonight, my homeboy, Office Ninja. How you doing, bro? <laughs> good man. I'm good man. Thank you for having me here. Thank you for coming. It's 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 so fun because the fact that I've been doing a lot of our Top Shot interviews um, through Zoom because a lot of them are off. Uh, uh, Stay Mello was all the way in Scarborough, but I think he's going to come in a couple of times. Top Shot Tandy. I was all the way in Europe when I had him. Duckett was all the way in Florida. So this is awesome that we actually had somebody that we found out that we're, oh, hey, we're Canadian. <laughs> Everyone, we're just near each other. And uh, why, did, why not do a shoot right in the studio, right? Yep. So uh, we can start off by kind of, you know, my favorite part about it is finding out how your Top Shot story started. So, like, talk to me through how did you discover Top Shot? Who introduced it to you? For sure. And you got to stop me if I ramble, though. Okay. Because my stories can go long, but... <laughs> Um, I'll probably say that uh, before I was into Top Shot, and I discovered Top Shot on Twitter, I think what happened was during the pandemic, um, it was actually my, my brother had called me once, and it'll make sense in a minute, but he was just like, hey, do you still have your Pokemon cards? And I was like, um, I used to have them somewhere, I can't find them. And I'm like, why? And he's like, well, I just sold mine for a ton of money. Yeah. You should find yours. And I was like, oh. And then I obsessed over it for like months calling my parents, calling around, digging through every box I had in the house, and I couldn't find them. And that led me to rediscovering Pokemon cards. And a guy my age, I was like, I don't care. I've got kids. I'm like, I'll buy Pokemon cards for them, but really for me. And I was buying all these cards, and I was obsessed with that for a minute. And then um, I, I think I went on Twitter to just see if people were, you know, big into Pokemon cards on Twitter. And I had a Twitter account from 2009. Oh, wow. So I have an old account. I was yeah. rarely on there. Yeah. I went on to see what's up with Pokemon, and then I saw someone talking about Top Shot, and that was right around the time when like the NFT buzz started. Um, oh. I think the the Beeple um, piece sold for like sixty nine million dollars, yeah. and so I kind of put two and two together. I was like, okay, NFTs, cool. Uh, I had a bit of background on blockchain technology and cryptocurrency. Um, I'm a basketball fan, so something just stood out when someone tweeted about it, and I just looked into it. And at the time, you also had to uh, attempt to get an account. Like, it wasn't mm. like, it, it, I yeah, remember, I it, remember was, it, was, it was closed down that for was a while. Too, yeah. <laughs> it was closed down for a while, and I think the more I, I dug into it, someone's like, oh, if you log in just with your Google account, like, you have a better chance. And so I did that, got an account. Um, I'm trying to think, I can't remember if I was able to get a pack right away or if I jumped into like buying moments, but it didn't take me long to just get hooked on it. Hmm. It replaced like, it replaced Pokemon. all the Pokemon stuff. I was like, I was like, okay, cool. It's NFTs, it's digital collectibles, it's the future, future of collectibles. And so that's where, uh, that's where I started putting all my attention. Talk to me through like uh, your first, I guess like, you know, what made you decide to kind of jump like, you know, there's like that moment because I went, how I discovered it was, hey, somebody told me, my best friend told me about it. And I'm, I made an account, but I don't remember ever touching it. Right. <laughs> and I, there was some, I think there was a point where I just like, all right, let's, you know, there's a point where you, you're somewhere in between like the, the shore and the sand and you just kind of stepped in and you just kind of got drowned by the waves of it. Like, do you remember that kind of moment in like when you're like, all right, I jumped in? <laughs> I, I do. Because I think at the same time, once I discovered it, um, again, I called my younger brother and I told him about it. I'm like, you need to look into this. And the more I started to just talk through the, um, like the pros and cons of physical collectibles and digital collectibles. And I was reading other articles and other you know, POVs on, on, on that topic. So it's like, we've got all these physical cards and they take up space. And if you want to get them graded, you have to take care of them because if the slightest little dent will bring down the grading if you're attempting to, you know, get them graded for as an investment and a, like to continue collecting. And then I was like, but with NFTs, it's all digital. It's perfect. Exactly. It's uh, super easy to get into as well. Yeah. Actually, I think what I really did like about Top Shot was even though it took me a minute to get my account, like just to get an account, once I had it, it was just so easy to buy right. moments and buy exactly. packs. I mean, <laughs> it sounds terrible, but it's true. like, like if you're trying to buy other NFTs today, there's a learning it's curve. So much. You harder. have to understand MetaMask, and yeah. you might have to understand how to get 
you know, Ethereum, how do I purchase this and move it from this wallet to this wallet and yeah. attach it to this, you know, site? And with Topshot, it's like, um, what's your email address? Do you have a credit card? All right, go ahead. I think um, what, one thing that I learned from Tashi, they took it from gambling sites. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they configured their user interface and their payments so almost like a gambling website that for us it made it so easy to just like oh hey i want that moment oh i can pay through with a credit card like it's difficult for that you know that's one thing that i think uh, top shot's not getting enough credit for is they made it so easy for mass adoption yeah and and the fact that it made it easy to us to understand that uh, we just had to really care about the fact of uh, the stuff that we care about which is basketball in top shot Whereas in the NFT space, you kind of have to learn almost other things on top of just liking the art. You also have to look into how the team and what yeah, they're doing. Exactly. Whereas with Top Shot, it's just straight up basketball. You know. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember like the first pack that you ever opened, or the very first moment that you bought? Like, what was like um, your first of first pack and first moment? Maybe that's the good one. We have like what two minutes? Let's make that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think the first pack was probably just a series two, like a base pack. Yeah. But at the time, this is when packs were so far and few in between. You know what I mean? It was like a huge queue of people trying to get these packs. And so that wasn't like the, the gambling element, but it was the chance element. And I, I actually also liked, that's another thing I was going to bring up. Like I liked the randomized queue. Uh, yeah. It felt fair. Yeah. Now, at the time, I lucked out and I probably hit on two or three drops. Wow. But when between my brother and any friends that I tried to get into it, like they weren't hitting the drops. Mm. And so if you don't hit a drop for like one or two, you get discouraged True. and you're just like, you're like, eh, I'm not gonna get a pack anyway. Yeah. But I kept hitting packs. So that first pack was probably just a common pack. Yeah. I kind of wish I looked through my collection prior to coming like here to talk to you. Cause I'm like, if I scroll back, I'm trying to think, it wasn't like a cool cats pack. It was, we'll have to look at it. Like if we scroll through, I'll, I could probably figure out what my earlier <laughs> yeah. packs were. But I remember my first moments were Raptors moments because like when you set up your account, they're like, pick your favorite team. team and, yeah. and they kind of have these initial challenges. So I went and bought a handful of Raptors moments right off the bat. Yeah. And that is all we have guys for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope you guys give a warm welcome to Kayla. She'll be here for the whole season with us talking basketball and the Raptors. Before we end off the show, any last words you want to give to our audience? Yes, I am super excited to be here. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Definitely check out our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Pinoy Bounce. We will be doing a lot of updates there, so check us out for sure. Out of that, guys, stay ballin'.